Okay, so uh, we're diving into some who pretty dark territory today. Yeah, this was a doozy. Yeah, we're talking about Diddy, right? Sean Diddy Combs, right? And uh, a lot of the allegations that have been swirling around him, and and really the larger hip hop scene in the nineties. Yeah, and you've given me a lot to dig through here. Oh yeah, a lot of sources. Oh yeah, a lot of uh, you know firsthand accounts, articles. There's even um, you know snippets from documentaries. Yeah, we're going deep. We're going deep, exactly. And the goal here is is not to say like this is definitely what happened, right? But to say okay. What are people saying? What are the consistent threads? Right. Are there consistent threads? Are there things that, uh, you know, looking back at this time period now with, with maybe fresh eyes, do things make more sense? Um, and especially, like, I mean, right off the bat, Jaguar, right? Oh, yeah. Her accusations are are pretty out there. Yeah, she does not hold back. No, she does not. And to go after, to make accusations against Diddy, that's one thing, right? Sure. But then to also bring in the Smith family. Yeah, that's a whole other. Jaden Smith, like that's that's a whole other level. And that's what makes this so fascinating, right? Because we're not just talking about music industry gossip here. Right. We're talking about potential abuse of power that extends beyond music into like the very fabric of celebrity. Absolutely. And yeah. I think to to really understand this, we have to sort of like set the stage, right? Yeah. Like what was the hip hop scene like in the nineties? It was a powder keg, you yeah. know. <laughs> You've got this genre blowing up, becoming this global phenomenon. Right. But the industry itself still very much a boys club. Oh, absolutely. And in that world, Diddy was king. He had the Midas touch could make you a star overnight. Yeah. But that kind of power, especially in a system that's still finding its footing. Yeah. Ripe for abuse. Right. Yeah. When you've got all this money. Oh, yeah. Like hip hop is making money hand over fist at this point. Yeah. And you've got, you know, young artists. A lot of them hungry. Hungry, eager to please, maybe not, you know, thinking long term. Right. They want the fame, the money, the girls, whatever it is. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to get it. Right, exactly. And I think that's where these allegations of financial manipulation are really interesting, well, right? Really. Because it's not always as simple as, like, someone stealing money. Right, it's often more insidious than that. Exactly. exactly. Like, gotta understand the music industry, how it works, the contracts, the publishing, all of it. Yeah, and it seems like Diddy, I mean... If, if these allegations are true, he understood it better than almost anybody. He was a master strategist, no doubt. And it's something that comes up again and again in these sources, right? Like, choke no joke, talking about what happened with Biggie's music. Right, and that's huge because we're not just talking about some unknown rapper here. We're talking about Biggie Smalls. The notorious B.I.G. Exactly. One of, if not the biggest name in hip-hop. And if what choke no joke says is true, if Diddy was controlling Biggie's publishing... That's not just about money. It's about legacy, about who controls the narrative even after someone's gone. Right. And and that control, that power, it can be used in some pretty, uh, pretty dark ways. Oh, no question. I mean, we see it again and again, not just with the finances, but with the allegations of violence. Right. And that's where things get really unsettling. Like Tia Kemp's account with Rick Ross. See, that's what I mean about the threads connecting. You've got the money, you've got the power, and then you've got these whispers of violence, of intimidation. Yeah, and it's like you start to see how these things might have gone hand in hand. Right, because fear is a powerful motivator. And if people were afraid to cross Diddy, afraid to speak out against him. Then it creates this environment where anything goes, right? I'd say. And nobody, it seems, embodies that struggle to be heard more than Jaguar Wright. Oh, man, her story is... It's something else. She goes all in. Yeah, she names names, she gives specifics, and she paints a picture of an industry where silence equals complicity. And those claims about Jay-Z, man. See, and that's the thing. It's not just Diddy. Right. It's bigger than any one person. It's about a system, a culture, that allowed this kind of behavior to flourish. And these parties, right? Oh, yeah, the infamous Diddy parties. Every source mentions them, but they're never just parties, are they? Oh, no, they're more like... Symbols, I guess, of this whole world we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. They're more like, I don't know, like a backstage pass to something. Sorted. Yeah, sorted, exactly. And there's this one detail from uh, from the Ray J interview, right? Yeah, the one where he talks about... He just casually mentions Diddy bringing Justin Bieber 
to his place. Oh, right, right. And leaving him there for like two days. Yeah. And Bieber was what, like 15 at the time? Something like that. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what happened, right? We're not saying anything specific happened. Of course. Of course. But it's just, it's a weird detail, right? Yeah. It's a weird detail in a long list of weird details. And it just adds to this whole feeling that something is off, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and that brings us to, I think, the most, um, the most unsettling aspect of all of this, the allegations against Jaden Smith and and by extension, the whole Smith family. Yeah, this is where things get really, really complicated. Because we're not just talking about like industry rumors anymore. Right. This is serious stuff. Right. And, and you know, we have to be careful here, right? We have to acknowledge that these are just allegations. Absolutely. We're not saying any of this is definitely true. But at the same time, we can't just ignore them, right? right? Especially because of who is involved. Right. Because the Smiths. They built their entire brand on this idea of openness, of honesty. Right. Like Will Smith, he's put his whole life out there for the world to see. His marriage, his kids, his struggles, everything. And then you have Jaguar Wright coming in with these accusations. Talk about a bombshell. Right. I mean, she's accusing Will of abuse, even suggesting that he assaulted Jaden. Yeah. And that's heavy stuff, man. That's not something you just gloss over. No, absolutely not. And then you look at Jaden's life, right? Right, and he's been very open about his own journey, his identity. Right, like his friendship with Tyler, the creator, that's been very public. Right, and all that stuff with Justin Bieber, the videos, the yeah, whatever that was all about. It's just, it's a lot to unpack, right? And it makes you wonder, like, was Jaguar right? right? Was there more going on beneath the surface of this, this picture-perfect family? Exactly, because if she was right... It kind of reframes everything, doesn't it? It makes you question everything you thought you knew about them. Exactly. And it brings up a bigger question, too. Like, why now? Right. Why are all these stories coming out now, decades later? It's been, what, like 25 years since some of this stuff allegedly happened? At least. So why are people talking now? Well, I think part of it is the hashtag MeToo movement, right? Sure. That's definitely part of it. It's changed the conversation, made it safer for people to come forward. Absolutely. But it's more than that, too, isn't it? Like, there's something about seeing powerful people fall from grace. Oh, for sure. That we just can't resist. Right? Not a car crash. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to look, but you can't help yourself. Right. Exactly. And and I think with Diddy, there's this added layer of, like, he's been in the news a lot lately. Oh, yeah. The legal troubles. Right. And maybe that's got people thinking, OK, maybe now is the time to speak up. Maybe now people will finally listen. Because if they don't listen when someone's already down, when are they going to listen? Right, exactly. And remember what Jaguar Wright said about more witnesses. Oh, yeah, that was chilling. She made it sound like this is just the tip of the iceberg, you know? Yeah, and that's that's kind of terrifying, honestly. It is, because if she's right, if there are more people out there with stories to tell... Who knows what we'll find out. It makes you wonder, like, where does this all leave us? You know, what are we even supposed to do with all this information? Right, because, I mean, we're never going to know for sure what happened, right? Not unless someone comes forward with, like, irrefutable proof. Right, and even then, it's it's like, whose word do you believe? Exactly. It becomes a question of credibility, of who's yeah. got more to gain or lose. And I think that's that's what makes this so difficult, right? Because we're left with these these fragments, these glimpses into a world that, frankly, most of us will never experience firsthand. And it forces us to confront, like, some really uncomfortable truths about power. Right, and about the systems that allow these power dynamics to exist. And about our own complicity, maybe, in perpetuating those systems. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I think it's so important. Like, if you're listening to this, you know, don't just take our word for it. Please, do your own research. Think critically. Exactly, because this isn't about, like, canceling Diddy or or, you know, putting the Smith family on trial. Right, it's about looking at the bigger picture. It's about understanding how these systems work, how power is used and abused, and how we can all do our part to create a more just and equitable world. And maybe, just maybe, if we can start asking these tough questions, having these uncomfortable conversations, yeah, then maybe we can start to break down those systems. Yeah, I like to think so. It's not gonna be easy. Oh no, it's gonna be a long, hard road. But it's a road we have to travel. You know, for ourselves, for each other, and for all the people who've been silenced or ignored for far too long. Couldn't have said it better myself. <gasps>